Oh, I don't mean to cut you off, guys. We have some breaking news here that I think we're going to react to live in the moment. Yes, uh, this is it. from Jeff Goodman of the Field of 68. Ohio State has parted ways with Chris Holtman, source told the Ooh. Field of 68. Wow. Holtman went to the NCAA tournament in each of his first four years with the Buckeyes and was set to go to the, to the tournament the year that it was canceled in 2020. Um, he went all three years at Butler and went to the Sweet 16. The last two years, the Buckeyes have taken a nosedive, and Gene Smith decided to make a move now. Um, real quick, I just before uh, I dive into it, last year they lost, I think it was 14 out of 15 at one point. Um, and this year, after starting the season 12 and 2, they lost uh, three in a row. They lost eight out of nine and nine out of 11. Um, and they get Purdue at home on Sunday. Uh, any reaction here, T.O.? Uh, the the people in uh, the people in uh, Columbus are not the most patient. That's for sure. I, I, the thing is, is Holtman can can. I, I don't know why it didn't work. Quite frankly, it, I I was really high on the Chris Holtman train. I'm still trying to figure out why. Um, you know, it's gone in the manner that it has. It's it's been perplexing, quite frankly. It, but we all know you you don't you go. What is it? They're four and ten in conference. Not good. Not good. Mm -hmm. You're not going to be able to hold that up. Is yeah. there any game less intriguing this year than Ohio State Michigan basketball? <laughs> no, <laughs> not at all. Not at all. The only intrigue between those two would be like if it was the kind of the lame duck matchup. It was it, they play Sunday, March third, and that would be uh, will will either Holtman or Howard make it there? And um, <laughs> well, we know one of those two won't make it there now. So yeah. Well, th th this is. This was a matter of time coming yeah. now after, but but I think it's surprising in that, that Ohio State got off to a really nice start to the year and flowed around being a top 20, top 25 team. And I think that a lot of us thought coming in the year that that Bruce Thornton would be able to take off and, and Roddy Gale and Felix Akpara. I did a full-fledged feature on on Thornton and Gale earlier this year. Like that, that's the thing. Ohio State's got talent. They got a lot of talent, uh, but this team just, they could never put it together and they hit the transfer portal. Um, you know, they brought in a couple of interesting pieces with Jamison battle uh, and Dale Bonner from Baylor. Like they did a decent job there, but, but the thought was that last year was going to be their rebuilding year and that they'd be able to propel it into this season because a lot of those, those freshmen played a lot of minutes last year and would be better off of it. Mm -hmm. Well, guess what? In Columbus, you might get one year. You do not get more than that. You don't even right. get a full second year. The standards are high in Columbus. They made this move because I guarantee you right now, Gene Smith started to examine his NIL space. And when he started to talk to the people that make the NIL happen, do you know what the response had to be? People aren't willing to give to a product that isn't winning. And the facts are facts. Chris Holtman this year, just not good enough. Last year, 16 and 19. This year, 14 and 10. And they never made the second weekend of the NCAA tournament. Ohio State hasn't made the second weekend of the NCAA tournament since the Amata. That's too long for this program. He was given seven seasons. He made the, the NCAA tournament in his first four tries, but he never broke through. Being on an average, being an average playing field team is not going to get it done in Columbus, Ohio. Ohio State basketball standards are better than that. I was willing to give Chris a pass last year. He didn't get the job done this year. Will he coach again? Yes, I fully believe he'll coach again. I think that he could find another chapter in his career where he does a very nice job because he did a great job at Butler. Mm -hmm. And before Butler, he was at Gardner-Webb and, and got them a 20-plus win season. Chris Holtman's a capable coach. This did not work out in Columbus, though, and because he could never break through. We all know in the NCAA tournament, it's it can be a game of chance, but he never could get the Buckeyes to the breakthrough. And unfortunately for him, those standards are too high for him to have kept the job past this year. They got it done today so that they can get that NIL reestablished and they can start their search today, which this is a really, really interesting coaching search happening in Columbus, there's going to be a deli line of candidates. I'm fascinated to see who they get. Mm -hmm. um, we can talk about candidates in a minute. What I will say is uh, I I do feel for 
Holt, who has always been, you know, very good to us and very good to the show. Um, there was a time probably like two or three years ago where his was the name that was circulated the most whenever people were saying, who's going to, who do you hire to replace John Calipari? Right. And I don't know if this was nerves. I don't know if this was something where he just got a little, um, too in his head when it came to some of these big games and some of these performances, uh, especially down the stretch, but there was too much talent on these teams uh, on his teams the last two years to have the runs that they did late in the season. Like that just, you can't, you can't do that and you can't make those runs. And um, I was kind of hoping he'd get a chance to turn it around at the end of the year. Obviously uh, Gene Smith made that decision that he's not going to allow him. And um, correct me if I'm wrong, but this is the last year that Gene Smith is in charge as the AD there, I believe at Ohio state. Um, so I think this is kind of the, the legacy of the decision that he made, uh, off the top of your head. Um, I'll tell you who the first person I would call if I was Gene Smith, the first place that I would reach out to, uh, I would, um, I would find my way down to Cincinnati. I would find my way down to Xavier. I would find my way to the Cintas center and I would find a way to try to see if Chris Holtman, uh, Chris Holtman, if Sean Miller would be interested in taking over a big 10 basketball program. Um, that'd probably be the first call that I would make in this situation. Uh, Tio, is that is that crazy? No, he, he'd be in there. I, I think with a job like that, I think there's a couple of other names that I would consider. And I'm, I'm looking through the uh, the Trilly Donovan list, and some of them make sense as guys that might move. I, I think Dusty May is a candidate, um, mm-hmm. obviously, and one that's mentioned. Um, that I'm I'm not completely against uh, Greg McDermott. Go down there, just see what's happening in Omaha, and if he wants to change the scenery, because that dude can coach. Uh, he's going to play a brand of basketball that you'll be able to sell in that state. And, and Ohio is a talent rich state. I said Doug McDermott. I said meant Greg McDermott. Excuse me. Mm-hmm. Uh, I had Doug McDermott the other day with the Pacers game. Uh, long story short, uh, I, I do think. Um, McDermott would be a candidate. Dusty May, uh, Sean Miller's name is going to be thrown in there no matter where it is, just because the dude knows how to win. Um, you know, somebody said, "What about Chris Mack?" I, I don't know that he would turn that job down, but <laughs> I also don't know that Chris Mack's coaching I again. I don't think. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. Well, one. Um, no, I'm not going to say it. Uh, I'll tell you. Okay. Um, I I don't. I think that Mac would have to take another job before he got this one. I think the the one thing that Trilly says here that I think is 100% correct is that a, a sitting high major coach will take this job. And his like his list is is more or less the similar to what I've heard. I, I all of those are great names. All of those are great coaches. Um Lamont Paris is the one that's really interesting to me, man. Ooh. Like, watching him at South Carolina, that dude can coach his balls. Right? But, <laughs> and he coaches um, like a Big 10 coach too. That would yep. be a zero transition. Yeah. That'd be easy. I, I do think Sean is the first call that I would make. Um, I w- honestly would not be surprised if it was Greg McDermott, though. I, I do think that he has. Uh, there's there's rumblings. There's rumblings there. We can uh, we can talk about those at another time. Listen, um, real Truly. quick. There's, well, that's. <laughs> I was going to do my little bit. We're the only guy that you could hire here. The first <laughs> name that I would call is Ed. Yeah. Um, people are, seem like they're kind of tired of 